I'm Filipino, and the last time I visited the Philippines, I ended up catching a cold. So I went to the drugstore to buy medicine for it, and I was walking through the store, and I came across an aisle like this one. And at first, the only thing that was even remotely remarkable about this aisle was the fact that there was just an utter abundance of lotion there. And I mean, who would ever need that much lotion in their life? That was pretty funny to me. But upon a closer look, I realized that all of the products that were there were for skin lightening. And for someone like me, who's on the darker end of the skin color spectrum, at least by Filipino standards, I wondered why would someone ever want to strip their skin of its pigment? I mean, first of all, it's expensive and it seems unnecessary. And as you're essentially bleaching your skin, it is obviously painful. But the sad truth of it all is that in the Philippines, having dark skin equates to being dirty, ugly, and poor. It's the reason why people don't leave their house without umbrellas, even when it's not raining, why they wear full-length pants and long sleeve shirts in 110 degree weather, and it's why someone like me would walk into a drugstore fully stocked with skin lightening products. And in that moment when I was looking at all of those products on the shelf that seemed to tell me that I shouldn't look the way that I do, I had never felt like more of an outsider. And I had never felt more ugly. So why? Why is skin lightening so prevalent in Southeast Asia, particularly in the Philippines? Well, long story short, the Philippines has a very long history of colonization, one that accumulates to hundreds of years even. And during this time, Native Filipinos were forced to relinquish their beliefs in favor of Eurocentric ones that their white oppressors believed were superior to theirs. And one of these was a new class system in which your skin color was a factor, i.e. the lighter your skin was, the higher your status was too. And soon enough, Filipinos began to try to fit into this white beauty standard of fair skin that was being imposed upon them. And sadly, this colonial ideal of anti-brownness has never left the people of the Philippines. Even now, my grandmother tells me, Bianca, you're so pretty, even though you're dark. And comments like these, comments about my skin, they rarely bother me as someone who has always looked different from the people in my family, as you can see here, me on the right, I've always had darker skin than my relatives. My skin color was always a topic of conversation in my family. They teased me about it all the time. It was even a long-standing joke that I was far too dark to be related to my brothers or my mom and that I just had to be adopted or something. So I was used to it by now. I was used to the unwanted attention, the mean comments, the criticism. But it didn't ever bother me that much because I knew they didn't mean it. To them, it was just funny. But what my grandmother said, she truly meant it that I was only pretty for a brown girl, and that she would never see me as truly and wholly beautiful, and that was what hurt me the most. That I simply could never be beautiful in her eyes because my skin was brown instead of white. The first time my grandma told me this, I went to my mom about it, and she could obviously tell that I was bothered, so she reassured me that, you know, my skin was something I should be proud of. I shouldn't feel insecure about it. It was something that made me beautiful. But how was I supposed to believe her? After all, I had grown up watching Filipino actors and actresses on TV, and they were all fair-skinned. And even if there was a dark-skinned actor or actress, they received far less screen time, and they were usually just there for comic relief. I started to feel even worse when I would watch the Miss Universe pageants on television every year. And I started to notice this pattern that the Philippines had to send contestants who were half white and half Filipino, and they all had fair skin. And obviously these women are intelligent and gorgeous, but that made me think, why could I never see myself in these women? Why was it that they never looked like me? If these women were supposed to be the embodiments of beauty and grace and what it truly meant to be the ideal Filipino woman, then why didn't I look like them? Was it because brown girls like me, were we just not worth being shown? Maybe we weren't beautiful at all. I wanted to be them. So I wore sunscreen all the time. I avoided the sun at all costs, and I would aggressively exfoliate my skin every single day in hopes that I could scrub off the color off my face as if it were dirt. It's, it was terrible, and I'm ashamed of admitting it now. And as unhealthy as it sounds, I found satisfaction in feeling like this gap between me and those fair-skinned women that I had always envied was getting a little bit smaller.
that with every layer of skin that I was scrubbing off, I was getting closer to what I thought it meant to be beautiful. And after some time of trying to actively lighten my skin, I was experiencing physical pain from it. My skin was excruciatingly dry. I had scabs on my face. I was bleeding. It even became difficult for me to focus in school or even fall asleep because I was in so much pain. And that's when I realized that nothing was worth hurting that much. That my skin, the skin that I have now, it is the only skin that I will ever exist in. So who cares about what some colonials from hundreds of years ago had to say about what is beautiful and what's not? I should be taking care of my skin. I should love it and appreciate it. And you and I and all of us should just radically accept ourselves for who we are, as we are, and not feel that we have to change how we look for anyone but ourselves. So I tried to do just that. I broke my skin lightening habits and slowly but surely, my perception of beauty and my perception of myself too, it changed. And now I think, how could I have ever been ashamed of my skin? Ashamed of the color of generations of native Filipinos who not only existed but thrived long before the Spanish colonials thought they had discovered them. And I'm proud to say that now I can look at fair-skinned women that I once envied and not feel any ounce of jealousy. That I can look in the mirror and appreciate my skin for what it is, a product of the history, resilience, and beauty of the Filipinos who came before me. Unfortunately, this is not a realization that everybody comes to. Today, the skin lightening industry, an industry built off of the self-hate and insecurities of vulnerable individuals, is a multi-billion dollar industry. Millions of people worldwide, they're willing to buy pills, undergo surgeries just to lighten their skin. And the people who can't afford the surgeries or the medication to achieve the look, they'll buy cheaper products with dangerous chemicals in it, some of which have even been linked to having mercury poisoning. And colorism has effects far beyond just a person's confidence or their physical health. People with darker skin, at least in the Philippines, are more likely to get bullied for their appearance. They have harder times getting hired over fair-skinned individuals. And the colorism they face has been linked to depression, anxiety, and other mental illnesses. So what can we do to stop this problem? Obviously, there's no overnight solution but there are small changes that all of us, myself included, are capable of that can make all the difference. For one thing, just being more careful about what you're saying goes a long way. For example, I know that it would always really hurt my feelings when a friend of mine or a family member would say something along the lines of, oh, I don't wanna stay in the sun too long today, I don't wanna get too dark. And I know that someone you know, who looks like me or is even darker than I am might feel similarly. So just practice sensitivity and think about how your words can affect others and their self-esteem. Secondly, support dark-skinned and brown-skinned Southeast Asians. You know, watch their movies, listen to their music, read their books, make them feel like they're important. Tell them that you value them, go out of your way to uplift them, because letting them know that they're appreciated and being kind to them can mean so much more than you think. And finally, never stop fighting colorism because it's a global issue. It doesn't just affect Filipino people. Colorism affects people all over Asia, the Latino community, indigenous people, and it especially affects people of African descent. So keep seeking information about colorism and have conversations with people who are affected by it and ask them about their experiences because you and I, we still have a lot to learn. And the more we try to educate ourselves, the closer we will be to a solution. And although eradicating this kind of discrimination altogether is no easy feat, I am hopeful and I am confident that through a collective effort, we can end colorism once and for all. Thank you.